Hey guys, how's it going? It's again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you if you haven't subscribed to the channel to please do so by just clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe because it's really going to help me in bringing you a lot more content. Today I'm going to do another video on Magic Leap development. We're going to be focusing on implementation of grabbing an object. So this implementation has two parts. One of them is going to be the grabbable object, which is the object that we're going to be grabbing. And we're also going to be implementing a grabber object. So I want to show you the implementation, the details, how it works, how it could be applied to multiple object types, like objects with gravity, objects without gravity, objects that are in motion. So let's jump into Unity and I start working on it. All right, guys, so let me show you what we're going to be doing in this video. So what I'm going to show you now is going to be the results of the implementation that I have in place. So I'm going to play the video so you can see the results. So as you can see, I have little 3D figures for the Magic Leap logo. Some of them have gravity on. So for instance, this one that I have selected didn't have gravity. This one has gravity on. So the implementation is flexible enough to, to be able to work with you know, objects that have no kinematic enable and objects that do have kinematic enable like this one also have a, it has a, physic, a physics material that has bounciness on it. And that's why when I basically lift it and throw it, it basically bounces. This one right here has a, also a physics component. It has a hinge join. You can see that, that it's actually each one of them are connected. And I'm basically select, selecting the pairing and holding the trigger button to grab each one of these figures. So this one I wanted to try and do something with motion. So it's rotating. I'm going to place it next to the chair. As soon as I let go, the rotation keeps going. So some of this is being coded and, and like the rotation is it knows that something has been grabbed. So that's what it stops rotating. So what I'm doing now is just basically, you know, placing that in a different place. So let me go ahead and show you the implementation of this. So I'm going to go into Unity and let me get everything here clean up. So I'm going to go back into, let's go back into my default layout so that everything is nice and clean. So as you can see, I have multiple controllers and you may ask, why do you have more multiple controllers? And I found ways to be able to test this without having it, you know, having to run that on the Magic Leap. And, and the way that I did that is I created what's called a controller debugger. And the controller left is going to be the controller that Magic Leap provides. And in fact, it has the controller connection handler, the visualizer, the transform, basically everything that you need in order for that controller to, to work. It also has one piece that it's what I'm using to detect collisions, and it has a sphere collider. It's kind of hard to see. Let me resize the gizmo a little bit, the camera gizmo, which is on the way. So one of the setups for the controller that you're going to need is basically an sphere collider. So I didn't really want to grab items if they were colliding with this part of the control. I only wanted to grab items if they were colliding with this area. So for me, an sphere collider work well. If your requirements are different, you're more than welcome to change the type of collider. So that's how the controller left is set up. It, it has the, like I said, the controller connection handler, the visualizer, the transform, a sphere collider, and, and basically the controller feedback example that Magic Leap provides. So this is very generic. There's no changes on it other than just an sphere collider. So the, the other controllers that I have on the scene they are basically just 3D objects with the controller connection handler attached to them. And, and in fact, I don't think I even need these, to be honest. I just have it in there just because it was one of the requirements for my script for the grabber. I'm not using that. I'm not buying into that. So it doesn't really matter if I have it on and off, to be honest. But for these debuggers, all I have is the grabber object. And this is going to be the same object that I have on the, on the controller. On the real controller, you can see the grabber script is the one that both of them have in common. So this grabber object is going to be the object that is going to be basically used to grab another object. So always the grabber object is going to be the source, and then the, the grabbable is going to be the object that you're going to be grabbing. So just remember that it can get a little bit confused if the names and if the, main, the names don't make sense. Let me know, and I'm you know more than happy to to refactor some of this code. So just remember that. And then under the controller debugger, 
I have, so not only have the grabber, but I also have a grabber debug. This is a script that all it does, it detects if you're running on the Unity Editor. If you're running on the Unity Editor, I'm not gonna hide this game object, but if you're running on the device, I don't want four controllers to be, actually five controllers to show up in the device because that's really not gonna work. So what this does is basically disables them if they are running on the Magic Leap device. And then just like I had on the other control, I have a sphere collider. So these are basically just mockups and, and of what it would look like in, you know, when you run the game. And in fact, you can actually test it without having to run on the game. And that's what I wanna show you before I keep showing you the implementation. So the way that I've been testing this is I can hit play and I try to, as much as I can, test this without having to put it on the device. And, and the reason for that is because you might know that because you know if you push something, you have to wait, and a lot of things don't work well when you run it on the device. So if I want to do a lot of tweaks, I prefer to keep everything in the editor as much as I can. So that's what I ended up you know, coding a little bit more, but it helps me with you know testing. So as you can see, I can run this scene with the basically in the Unity Editor. So the way that I've been testing this is, let's say that I want to test this controller and this interaction. So this interaction is an object that doesn't have any gravity on it. And in fact, if we go ahead and click it and click on the leaper, there is, this object is set to kinematic. It has a rigid body, but it doesn't, basically doesn't fall with gravity. So if I want to test it to see if it's working, if I were to get close and then go back, it's not gonna work, it's not gonna do anything because there's a property on the grabber object that determines if the user wants to grab that object, and that is this grabbing property. And the way that it works is if you're in the editor, you're basically gonna set it manually. You can also bind it to a, basically a key on your keyboard if you wanted to, or you can just click on it and then move it, and then it's gonna act like if you had it, you know, if you were pressing the trigger button on the controller, because the trigger button is what's going to enable it when you run it on the Magic Leap device. So if I were to select it and I get close to the object, you can see that it's basically mimicking like that object getting, you know, getting selected in augmented reality. And, and that's what I wanted to do. I really feel like this is a powerful implementation because I can test it here. I don't need to, I don't need to run it on the device. So what if I wanted to let go? Let's say that I wanted to mimic letting go of the trigger. I would basically check that and you can see that as soon as I do that, I can let go of the object. So that's basically for an object that doesn't have gravity. Let's say that I wanted to do the same thing on this other object with an object that has gravity on. So I can basically select grabbing, get close to the object, go up just to see if it's gonna fall with gravity and then let go of that, basically of that property. And you can see that it's falling with gravity. So. On, this, on each interaction, I have what I call a label. It has a text basically representing what it's doing. And this one is basically no gravity. This one has gravity. It looks like I need to fix some of the labels because I also have a formatter that will dynamically set that in the code. I'll show you that in a minute as well and we'll fix it. So on this other interaction, the same thing, I can select you know grabbing, get closer to the object, you can see that so this basically has a hinge join on each one of them. And I call the, I call each part a leap, basically it's called a leaper change part. And you can see that it has a hinge join and then each of them is connected by a rigid body. And that's why I can do a change interaction on this one. So if I were, if I were to go back to that controller and move it back, you can see that you know it's moving back with the, with the controller. So if I wanna let go, you can see that it's falling. So that interaction is also really powerful. So what if I wanted to do an object that was in motion and I didn't want the rotation to keep basically rotating if I had if I was moving the object. And, and that's basically the, UK, the use case that I have right now. Say that I wanna say it's grabbing on and, and I go ahead and select it. You can see that the rotation stop, but if I let go of the trigger, I can, you know, it, it keeps rotating. So if I do that again, I'm closer, I get up, and then I let go of the trigger, it keeps updating. So that's just another interaction to, you know, to detect if objects are rotating, how can I let go, how can I select an object, and how it would actually work in augmented reality. So this has been really fun to do, you know, a lot of experimentation with. There's a lot of ideas that I have on other things that I wanna do, 
but for now we just have those four different interactions so let me show you how the code works so like I was saying each one of these let's say that I want to look at this leaper each one of them has a grabbable a grabbable script it also has so if we go back into into the component so this is not required but I have a grab basically a grab state and the grab state has a text mesh pro it basically allows me to determine if the state was changed so if you don't want to use that this is not required the script is going to check to see if it's null if it's null it's just not going to use it if it's not null it will use it the other thing that I have in here on this subject it's what I call the grab the grab state text format and, and that's for me to dynamically change the state in code so for instance on this one I should probably have no gravity on and if I don't do that it's, it's basically going to disappear if I if I select it so let me just go ahead and, and change that here and then now if we go ahead and if we go ahead and change the state you're going to see that that's going to change the state I'm also going to fix that here because this one also needs to be to have the the gravity so I'm just going to say gravity and then let's fix the other one which is going to be right behind the canvas that one is gravity change and let me go ahead and yeah I didn't do it on that one either so this one's going to be gravity chain and I'm doing a, a backslash n so that I can terminate it and go into a new line and then la the last one is going to be catch me so let's go ahead and change that one as well so this one is going to be backslash n catch me and then basically doing like a smiley face at the end so what's going to happen is when I have selected the color is going to change to green and then the number one means that I'm going to I'm going to pass in the state and then I'm just basically adding you know a little bit of text at the end to determine what what it is so if I if I were to run it now and I hit play and I'm losing my voice because I'm I'm just talking a lot <laughs> okay so if I go if I go into this one and we set it to grabbing now the grab basically now it's getting we still see it looks like the in it's not quite it's not quite working because I can see the end in there so let me go ahead and fix let me go ahead and fix that I think all I have to do is make sure that I can let's see so this is going to be this is going to be a property here that is allow, allows me to do rich text so that's not that one and it's been a while since I done okay let's look at the extra settings and rich text Let's go ahead and, on the, and disable. Oh, it looks like I actually need parse escape characters. Okay, so that's already parsing escape characters, which which is what I want to do. And okay, let me go back into visible the sender. Looks like it is parsing the characters, but when I when I go ahead and set in the code, it's not doing that. Let me go ahead and look at that implementation here and we can we can go ahead and fix it if it doesn't if it doesn't work and okay so it looks like that one should work and okay so let me go ahead and hit play and see if that happens again so I'm gonna go ahead and go to scene and then let's get this closer to the object and then it just says no gravity so I'm not going to worry about it to be honest I think for now we can just go ahead and remove the go ahead and remove the backslash n and just add a space I think I think that's fine I don't think we need to worry about that in, that for now and then the other thing that I'll do is I'll do the same thing on this one just add a space there then we'll do the same thing on this other one add a space so I should have the first one, the second one, the chain, it's also going to have to change. I'll just add a space. And then the last one, it's going to have a space as well. Let me just test them just to make sure everything looks good. So I'm going to go to scene. And then we're going to get close to this. And I'm going to set it to grabbing enable. Get close. Okay, so I think that's fine. That works. Let's do the same thing on this other one. Set grabbing to on. Okay, so that one works. 
if I let it go, I set to off, and then we'll test this one as well. And I need to enable it. And okay, that works. If I let go, it's good and it looks like it fall. That's cool. <laughs> Okay, let me let me also test the last one and then I think we'll we'll start looking at the code. Okay, and then this one is also working. It looks like I have catch me in there. And if I let go, okay. So everything is working. I think I think we're good to go. So the next thing that I want to show you is the implementation. So like I was saying on the on the controller, I have the grabber object, and then on the childs, like the leaper, I have the grabbable with you know the, the actual text that is gonna display the little overlay the format that is going to help us change the state dynamically and then also a property whether to use basically physics or not if you want to use an object that has kinematic on or kinematic off you can basically use that that for that so let's go let's go into the code and start looking at some of these implementations so the the parts that i want to show you is i want to start from the grabber so the grabber is going to be what we put on the controller so because we're using a controller component, I wanted to make sure that we were requiring the controller connection handler, which is what I'm doing here. And that's why the controller connection handler is getting added to the controller, the controller debugger that I show you. That's because I made it require, even though we don't use it on these ones, I still getting, it's getting added, but it will be used on the real controller. So that's what I wanted to make sure that that was required. Just remove this using a statement. So, First thing that I do is I add a private variable for the controller connection handler. Then this is the property that I show you that determines whether we're grabbing something or not. So if we're grabbing something, that means that the user is basically selecting the trigger button on the controller. If they get, if they let go of the trigger button, that property is gonna set to false. If they enable it, if they're pushing, it's gonna set to true. This one I'm exposing because I need the grabbable object to know about it. And then on the start method, I'm, I'm getting a reference to the controller connection handler and setting that private variable. And then I'm using ML input on trigger down and on trigger up to determine if the user is pressing the trigger button. And the, the way that I can test this on Unity without actually running on the device is I have a compiler flag and determining if I'm running in the editor. If I'm running in the editor, I'm basically capturing the... so. So this is another thing that I did. I'm using the left shift key on the keyboard to basically to mock this up. You could use that as well. And But what I ended up doing for testing, I was just setting that through the inspector. That works as well. But this is another option. If you want to use the left shift or if you want to change that key, you're more than welcome to do that. And it's going to change that variable as well. So and then I'm basically just capturing the handle on trigger down and handle on trigger up. And I'm on the on the on the trigger down. The first time that you push the trigger button, I'm getting it's basically vibrating. I'm sending feedback of a buzz, and I thought that was cool because I wanted to know. Okay, when I'm pushing that, I know that I'm I, I want to grab an object. So I set the grabbing property to true, and then when I let go of the trigger, I set that grabbing property to false, which means that we're not trying to grab an object anymore. So. This implementation is pretty straightforward. There's not really a lot of code. So now let me show you what's happening on the grabbable. And let me go here and and I really apologize about my voice. I think I'm losing my voice. It's 12:46 a.m. <laughs> and but I'm having a lot of fun. So this is this is cool. So on the grabbable, I have the like I show you the text mesh pro. I set it to null, and also you can set it through the inspector. I also have a grab a state text format. This is what I use to dynamically set the state. I also have, and of course I have a default value, which is gonna be that just in case you remove, you know, you start with nothing. This is gonna be the one that is set as a default. And then this one is used to determine if I want to set kinematics on an object or not. So if an object is using gravity, I wanna make sure the kinematic is set to false as soon as I let go of the of the trigger button. I also needed to know the object I was grabbing, so that's why I'm using this reference here of grabber. And also I'm using the not the object that I'm grabbing. This is actually for the for the object that it's grabbing me because at this point this is the grabbable. So I need to know if the grabber object has it's the person actually pressed the trigger button. So 
I need to know that prop the properties from these, and that's why I have, if we go back to the grabber, that's why I have this expose is, is grabbing property. Is the reason why I did that is because I need I need to know if the con if the person is holding the trigger button. If they are, I can actually, you know, do the, the configuration that I have, the implementation that I have to grab that object. So that's what this is for, just to know if somebody is, is holding that trigger button. And then I needed to know the original pairing because when you start the game, the nothing is gonna be it, the the leaper, it's also it's actually gonna be attached to to nobody because I'm using parenting parenting to know okay so if this is colliding with this object I'm making this object be a child of this object that way if I move and rotation anything that I do with this object this one is going to react to that so I needed to know what the original parent was so that I can reset it back when when the trigger bond is, is released then I also need to know the rigid body of this component so that I can set kinematics appropriately and then I also need to know if I am being grabbed. If I am being grabbed, then you know I set the property to true. If I'm not, then I set it to false. And, and as you can notice, the only person, the only object that is responsible for setting this is this instance. And that's why I did a private set and a public getter, because you know anybody can access that publicly, but I only want to, I only want this class to be able to set it. Okay, so then the other thing that I want to show you is the awake method. So on the awake method, I get a reference to the original parent so that I can use that there, you know, afterwards to reset it back. And then I also get a reference to a rigid body. And then the first thing that I do is if the rigid body is not null, I set kinematics based on the use gravity property. And I just do a not in that case. Because if we say, let's say that we want to use, we want to use gravity. So gravity is going to be set to true. So you don't want to set kinematic to true when we want to use gravity because then the object would never be falling. It, it basically is gonna it's never gonna move. So I'm doing a knot on that to be able to use gravity. So the other thing that I do is I have two methods that are the ones that are doing most of the work. As you can see, I am using the trigger workflow. So I'm capturing the untrigger enter, I'm capturing the untrigger stay, and also the untrigger exit. And I'm using a lambda expression because they're only one liners. And on each one of them, I'm calling a method. So I'm calling a grab and passing the collider. And then I'm, I'm also calling the release on trigger state and also on trigger exit. And there are reasons why I had to call that twice. And I'll show you why that is. Because there's a lot of instances when, you know, when I, for some reason, there's instances where you might not exit out of an object you might just be staying on that object. So I wanted to make sure that I was capturing, you know, the grab object even on the on trigger state. So I'll show you some, I'll show you that implementation. So on the on the grab implementation, the first thing that I do is I, I determine if the object that I'm colliding with has a grabber object. So if it has a grabber object, I know that somebody, you know, I know that the object that it's colliding with is gonna be the controller. If if it is null, then I know that the object that is colliding with me is not the controller. So in the instance when it is the controller, this is this is not going to be null. So we're going to get into here. And also, I need to make sure that the, that the controller is being triggered. So that's why I have this property here, which is the one that I show you on the, on the actual grabber component. So let me go ahead and put it right here so you can see that. Now we can just resize this. So that's going to be that property. So if we if the control if the component that we're colliding with is the controller and i'm currently grabbing the object then i know that i need to grab that object so i set the private property to true meaning that this object is getting grabbed and then the other thing that i do is because i wanted to make it optional i wanted to make sure that you know if an object didn't have physics if it didn't have a rigid body i didn't really need to set kinematics so that's what i'm doing here if the object if the object has has a rigid bodies and I am using I am using gravity, then I want to make sure that I set kinematic to true, because if an object is falling by physics and you're grabbing the object, you're ne it's basically going to act really weird. You're not going to be able to grab it. You're not going to be able to see it. So for object that has physics and, and I'm using gravity, 
I say kinematic to true. That way we can move it around and then when we're done with it, when we're releasing the object, we say kinematic to false. Okay, so that's that piece. And then the other thing that I do is I set the transform pairing of, of this object to be the grabber transform. So what's gonna happen is this object, which is gonna be, in our case, is gonna be the leaper. It's going to be a child of the controller. That way, if I move it around, we, we can attach to that object. And then when I let go, what I do on the release, I'm basically setting the transform that parent to be the original parent, which is also, it's actually gonna change this leaper to be to have the parent that it had originally, which it was in the controller. So, and then the other thing that I do is I check to make sure that the grab state text is not null, because I wanna make it optional, and that's why I did it this way. So if it if it's not set or if you if you want to use text mesh pro, then I set the values, you know, to be the grab state text format. I pass in a green and I pass in an on. Because at this point we are grabbing an object, so the state should be on and then the color should be green. Okay, so that is basically the grabbing implementation and then the release implementation. So in some cases, in some situations, you might not be grabbing the object and the I had issues with with some of this implementation because the I had, I had, key, I had cases when the grab didn't actually happen because the on trigger enter never executed because it could be that you release the object but you're still within the boundaries of that object so what's going to happen is you're never going to you're never going to reach that so on trigger state will get executed so what I did to fix that is I'm basically checking okay if the grabber is null, then I'm gonna grab the object because I never, I was never outside of the boundaries of that object. So I'm grabbing the object, and that's what I'm calling the release right here, and also the release right here. And then the other thing that I do is, okay, if I know that it's a controller, that in that the that the controller is being set, and that I'm not grabbing anymore, I'm gonna change the grab properties. I set it to false. Then I check to make sure that I'm using gravity. If I'm using gravity, I set kinematic to fall so that the object can fall. But if I'm not using gravity, then I don't have to worry about it. I also change the grabber back to null because at this point we were not being grabbed by anybody. So grabber should be null. And then I'm setting the parent of this child object to be the original parent, which is actually not gonna have any parents. It's just gonna be the root in the, in, in the hierarchy. And then the other thing that I do is I check to see, okay, for using the, the state text, then I change the state to be off and then the color red. So that's basically that implementation. So the last thing that I wanna show you is the rotation. And this one can be customizable for, you know, for anything that you like. The, you might ask Dilmer, why do you add on the, on the gravel object, why do you add a property of call, call grab and why do you make it private? So private because I only wanted this object to be set in that. And this one is public because I wanted other objects to know what was the state of an object. So in the instance of, let me show you, on the instance of this object right here, which is rotating. So this object has a component. Let me show you the configuration. So I still have a gravel component, just like every other component in this scene that it's been grabbed. But I also have a grabbable rotation. So this guy needs to know about these, the state of this one before the rotation needs to, you know, before the rotation stop. So if we go into that implementation, I can show you what I, what I, what I did there. So if we go to gravel rotation, so what I do is I have rotation speed. I'm also using a range so you can see a slider in the inspector. Then I also have a private variable to the grabbable object. And then I basically just say, okay, give me the grabbable component, which is going to be, you know, the, the object that is being grabbed. And then I check, okay, if the grabbable component does not equal null, meaning that we do have a grabbable component and the object is not being grabbed, then I can rotate the component. But if the object is being grabbed, I don't want to keep the rotation going. And, and this really depends on, on what you're trying to do. For my use case, I just wanted to stop the rotation from happening when the object was being grabbed. But there's other instances where you might want to keep that. Maybe, I don't know, maybe if you have an earth that you wanted to grab, you wanted to keep it rotating as you were moving it around, I think that would work. Or if you wanted to, 
you know, maybe it was a particle system or something like that that you wanted to keep going. So this is comp this is just an example of, you know, something happening in motion and how you can check to see if the object being grabbed is, is actually being grabbed. So this is just that other example. So I think that's basically everything that I wanted to show you. If you guys have any questions about anything that I mentioned, let me know through the comments because I'm really, you know, I'm really looking for feedback on, on what I'm doing right now. So what I'm looking for is feedback on the, you know, how are you using these? Does it, you know, does it fulfill the use case that you're working with? If it doesn't, let me know and, and I'm more than happy to extend it. I'm going to be creating more instances of these and, and more different use cases. So if it doesn't work for you, let me know and, and I'm more than happy to change it. I'm also going to be implementing these for hand meshing. So what I want to do is I want to be able to grab components with my hands. So there's a lot of things that, I, that I'm going to be doing in the next videos. But again, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you, guys. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions about what I just mentioned, please let me know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out GameDev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers. And also find me in Patreon.com where I'm posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes and also the URL to my GitHub repos. Thank you very much, guys.